say we've been sitting here talking candidly for an hour and now all of a sudden we're going to have to be serious. <laughs> I don't know if we can do it. Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Yes. Kel no. and Sal's excellent video making skills. That's pretty much where we want to go with this. Yeah. I'm so excited to have Sally Sargood from Animoto here in my studio today. She has come all the way from New York, not especially to see me, but I kind of bribed her into coming to see me. <laughs> it was just to see you. <laughs> For those that don't know, Sally's actually originally from Melbourne, so she's an Aussie like us, mm -hmm. like me, and um, she now lives in New York working for Animoto and has the most incredible life there. So to come home for a little bit of a holiday, she's fit me in, which is wonderful, mm -hmm. up in not-so-sunny Brisbane, because it's raining. Yes, and I'm not sure what that's all about, but no. it's all about you, so <laughs> I'm okay with the rain. We, um, we've actually been sitting here for a while wondering how to start the intro to this video, and it's kind of funny and ironic in the same, at the same time, because we're going to be talking about video and how to fit it into your business and make it work. and bring it all back to getting seen online and um, booking more clients, which is the most important thing. And the interesting thing is we've struggled with how to start this video and most people struggle with how to start with video marketing. Oh, absolutely. What to put in it, yep. um, you know, what to sort of um, make your, your whole point of story, how long to make them, how short to make them, the different types of music, the, um, the styles of videos that you can create and we're going to sit and go over all the things that we found that work and um, don't work and on all the different platforms. Mm -hmm. And even really to get the message across that don't let all of those things stop you, mm -hmm. just get started, which is what we had to do in the end. Oh, yeah. But like start somewhere, start making videos, and especially now social media is really important, um, to, and videos on social media are really powerful. So if you can not only start doing video marketing but posting them on Facebook and Instagram, um, you'll see a change in your business. That really is the way to get in front of people now. And uh, I know Facebook especially, you get three times the engagement with a video than what you do with a photo. Absolutely. And as photographers, we're used to just posting photos because that's what we do, right? Yeah. But if you put three, say three or four photos together with a bit of text and make it a video, you'll see that actually come up in the news feed more on Facebook. And I think that's what we can chat about more. Absolutely. And uh, help you all with today. Yeah, we were just having a chat before about that whole news feed and when you open your phone and, and when you're scrolling through your phone, what is it that you're actually seeing first? And we both opened up our phones for the exercise and the first four items that showed up in my news feed were all videos mm. and I think the first ten in yours. Mm. Yeah, I get a lot more videos. But um, Mark Zuckerberg said um, that in five years most of Facebook will be video and he said that in November 2014. Yeah, it's crazy. And I know my feed is all video, and that's why we're trying to encourage people to, businesses especially, to get on board and actually start marketing on social media with video. Yeah. We're so driven visually um, now in, in social media on all different platforms. I mean, if you look at Instagram, it's a visual platform. So when you're looking at something, a photo has to be so so quirky, so engaging for you to actually respond to it, whereas a video really captures you and draws you mm. into it because you want to see what happens next. It's like a movie, yeah. you know, and it's like a TV series. Mm. So you really want to be able to engage um, your potential clients and, and your online audience with, um, you know, all the different videos that you can make. Yeah, it has as, adds that emotional aspect to it too, especially if you're photographing babies. Yeah. Um, because it's one thing to see a really cute photograph of a baby, but to see it smiling or to see the parents nuzzling into it and to see that interaction between the baby and the parents or even just the baby alone, to actually see it moving Absolutely. adds a whole new dimension to it. So it can be really powerful to add a few video clips even to your photos yeah. when you're making your marketing videos. Yeah. So. When you're looking um, on any social social media platform, the ones that are going viral, like on YouTube, on Facebook and on Instagram, are those videos of um, different situations, you know, like your, your funny babies or your funny puppies and cats and things like that. It's because it really does allow you to connect and, and become emotionally invested in that. Mm -hmm. um, and it creates an emotion in you, whether it's sad, happy, um, you know, um, hysterically laughing at some of the videos that go around. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is too, I don't know if you know, recently they changed the algorithm on Facebook 
um, which a lot of people were talking about. A lot of businesses got concerned because they thought it meant that their posts may not be seen because Facebook were encouraging interaction between friends and family. Yeah. So suddenly businesses are like, well, how am I going to get seen if I'm not friends and family? But the way to do that is to, in, in, to get engagement. And engagement means shares, um, yeah. comments, and tagging people and things like that. And again, if it's more emotionally interactive, if it's something that people can um, connect with, which video is more likely to, yeah. then they are more likely to share it. They are more likely to engage with it and you will be seen in, into the news feed. Yeah. But even on that too, that algorithm change really only um, has an effect on organic posts. So if you're actually paying um, for an ad or to boost your post, those algorithm changes won't affect you. So although people are saying, well, Facebook just want my money, uh, it's money well spent, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's a platform where you can specifically target your audience because Facebook's taking all that information about us. Every day. Sharing it. And they know everything about us, all our interests, <laughs> what web pages we've been to and all of that sort of thing. So it is a great way that you can be very specific about your target with yeah. your boosting or your ads and um, really hone in on who you want to see what you're doing. Absolutely. Hmm. And it's so interesting that you talk about that in terms of that, that target audience and knowing exactly who they are. I know for, for photographers, um, it's nice to have those numbers on our business pages and get lots of likes and things like that and we count them and we can often get really caught up in, you know, being popular on social media but it's you know, we can't emphasize enough how important it is to understand that it's it's got to be quality, not quantity. So when I see um, posts that are, you know, share your Facebook page here, like for a like, let's all follow each other. When you're boosting and sharing things from your page and you're, you're boosting them to people like friends of people who like your page, you're boosting them to other photographers. So unless you provide a product or a service for them, you, you're targeting the wrong market. So it's really important to understand who it is you're targeting and like you said Facebook's you know incredible um, amount of information that they have can really help you be very specific on who it is that you're targeting and make sure you're getting the right people um, in terms of those boosted um, photographs and videos. Absolutely and I think too I think it's more important these days not just to get likes to your page mm -hmm. but to get people seeing what you're doing. Um, so even if they don't like your page if they're seeing your work in their news feed that's how they become aware of you. Yeah. Not by asking them to like you, you want that to be organic as well. Absolutely. So I think it's important and that's where it comes down to some people often say oh I did that once it didn't work. <laughs> But once yeah, you should it, give up now. Yeah. Don't do that again. If it didn't work, don't do it again. Yeah, well, and once, once, I mean, it can work. I do know people who've done it once and it was fantastic and guess what? They did it again Yeah, because it did work. But even if it doesn't work the first time, I think it's important to continue to try these things yeah. on social media. And everything's trial and error. Absolutely. And not only that, you can test everything too. Yeah. So, you know, you actually see the insights on your business page of what you did. So if you do boost a post or if you do put an ad up, you can look at the insights and see what worked. You can see if it's a video, how long they watched it for. You can see, you know, what videos perform better. You can actually test different things and see what works. And once you actually take notice of that, that's when the power kicks in. Absolutely. And you can really start. We've had a lot of people start posting videos and actually getting not just inquiries but bookings. Yeah. Um, there was one girl from the Baby Summit a couple of years ago and her very first boosted post, she spent $15 and she got 10 inquiries and three bookings and that was only in the beginning. I don't know how many she got in the end. She had like 5,000 views on the video yeah. um, and that really changed her business because, I mean, when you're starting out, that's what you want. That was her oh, yeah. very first marketing like $15. video. $15. Yeah. That's crazy. That's lunch. Yeah. That's a sandwich and a drink hmm. and you've just got three clients in the door. Hmm. And if you do that every week? Absolutely. That's that's business. Yeah. So. The power is huge. Yeah. And it's like the one thing I always get asked as an educator is what's the best way for me to market my business? Mm -hmm. And it's word of mouth in my opinion and it always has been. It's just now that word of mouth is online. It's digital. Everybody is sharing their experiences, good or bad, online. And when you're, um, you know, creating a lot of that content for people to interact with, then they're going to share it because they've had an incredible experience. It's, it's about that word of mouth. For us, one of the biggest things that's worked for us is creating um, beautiful birth announcements for our clients. We did this as a gift. 
and what we were able to do is create like a 30 to 30 second to 60 second video and I think it was five photographs we converted them all to black and white we put all the baby's details on to, to beautiful music and we gave that to them as a video um, we gave them a link where they could download the video and then they could share that on their social media pages um, we can share them on ours but I give it to them to share and then they're sharing it with their audience and those videos were getting so much traction because pregnant women know pregnant women you know, you surround yourself during, you know, and throughout your life with people who are going through similar, um, you know, situations with similar life, um, you know, milestones and things like that. So that reach for us was absolutely huge because it became word of mouth. They were sharing their experience and what we created with them through video on social media. Mm -hmm. And the reach was incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, that's where too, again, it keeps, that's where the algorithm kicks in because mm -hmm. if it's being shared, Facebook take note that, oh, they like this. This is an interactive post. So they keep putting it into the news feed. Yeah. Um, so that's where the organic reach comes in when you're actually sharing things that, when you're posting things you know people will share. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and birth announcements. I mean, everyone wants to share that oh, kind of news. Well, I mean, I know, for example, one of my clients, she told me that she shared the birth announcement on Facebook and, you know, she had three sisters and she had cousins and she had, you know, her parents. So all these proud grandparents with their first grandbaby. And everyone was sharing it with all of their friends. Mm -hmm. You know, look at my beautiful brand new grandbaby. Look at my niece. Look at, you know. And that traction was massive. Yeah. I mean, you can't, like, there's nothing better than that. Yeah, yeah. And, and the interesting thing is, too, I guess um, some people might find that, They've tried that. It, it doesn't. They don't get the traction they want. Yeah. And that's where I know I've mentioned boosting and ads. Um, if you find you're not getting that kind of interaction from your organic posts, I strongly encourage you to start boosting. Um, make it make it even a purely simple social media ad. So make it about um, book a session. Show what you do. Actually put it out there instead of like just sitting in your studio waiting for the work to come in. Absolutely. Put it on social media. And when you boost it. Boosting is a great interaction. Uh, interaction. <laughs> it's a great introduction to uh, to Facebook advertising because boosting is quite simple. You only get the option: do you want to um, boost for web clicks, I think, or yeah, for views? That's, that's right. it. So, do you want people to come to your website or just to have a look at this video? Um, and it's a really easy way to get brand awareness out there on social media. Totally. And I think then once you get used to, you can either boost it to friends of friends or you can actually start to choose your target audience. And once you get used to seeing what the targeting is um, and your choices there, you suddenly will grow more confident with that and can maybe then move into Ads Manager, which is yeah. actually a more transactional kind of objective in Ads Manager. So some people, if you've looked at an Ads Manager, you might have thought it was a bit intimidating because mm -hmm. there's a lot of choices, there's a lot to look at. Um, but start with boosting it and then look at the Ads Manager. And, and again, some people are like, I don't, I don't want to give Facebook my money, but I, I think Facebook advertising is cheap Absolutely. compared to other kind of advertising. Uh, it's also kind of easy. And before social media, you had to pay to advertise. Uh -huh. Like then when Facebook first came out, everyone was like, oh my God, we can create a business page. It's all free. Mm. I think we had it good for a really long time. Mm. And now that small investment mm. can have a massive return mm. in terms of what we used to have to pay to either have a pamphlet distributed or advertise in a magazine mm. or a newspaper way before social media. Yeah, I know it's a, in a wedding studio, like a magazine ad was $3,000. Oh, absolutely. And now people are like, I don't want to give Facebook 100 bucks. Yeah. You know, that might get me a few And bookings. it all comes back to budgeting. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're really smart about, um, you know, allocating a marketing budget, you really want to create up a beautiful sort of monthly and weekly marketing plan. Work out what days of the week you're going to do what and set aside a budget specific for that. And then take into consideration all of the different potential um, promotional holidays that are coming up mm -hmm. and any other sort of, you know, um, little sessions that you want to run and things like that. Because you can, you know, with that small amount of money, um, you could book yourself out for the month of May for Mother's Day, for example. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Hallmark holidays are, to me, one of the best things because there's always a Hallmark holiday coming up. Mother's Day is a great reason to make a video and put it on social media. And even if you're not selling yourself, if it's not a book a session for Mother's Day, it can just be, how special is a mum? 
and make a video with your with your images with some beautiful words, some quotes maybe. Absolutely. Um, and at the end, it can just say Happy Mother's Day from Little Pieces Photography. It doesn't have to say book a session. So these are just ways of, again, getting seen. Yeah. Another great one um, is a listicle, which is like a top three or a top five. So it can be top three tips for this or a top mm -hmm. five tips. So a lot of the time people run out of ideas for different videos. Um, but there's lots of different things that you can make. Tell a story. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, help someone out. Your beautiful um, what to expect video uh, is a beautiful thing to, to put on social media for people to get a, um, ex an idea of the experience that they're coming yeah. in for. And I, I mentioned, I've mentioned to you before, with our what to expect video, we didn't make it to share on social media actually. It was quite interesting because we made it to send to our clients. We have a beautiful PDF that we can send out that's got a list of everything that the client needs to know prior to a shoot and a beautiful photograph of the studio so that they're familiar with the environment before they come. Um, but we were like, well, how can we actually get them more involved? Because what I was finding with that PDF is that people don't like to read. So not everyone was reading all the information on there. And they were often emailing us with questions that would have been answered if they'd read the PDF. So we're like, okay, well, we know people like to watch things and it gets them really excited. So for our what to expect, we created it purely to send to our clients who had already booked who are coming in for a session. So we send it to them um, once they've let us know that their baby is, is you know, arrived safely and they're home from hospital. So it gets them that little bit more excited. And um, what we found was more and more of those people were sharing that video on their social media pages because they were like, oh, we're so excited. We're off to our shoot. And I don't know if you've ever had a baby, you understand those hormones that are going through your body, how in love you are with your own baby, and you want everybody around you to see that and feel that same amount of love that you're actually going through. It sounds kind of corny, but it's so true. And, um, and so we shared it on our Facebook page because we we'd had people contacting us saying, oh, we saw your video. And we're like, what video? <laughs> and then when we shared it, it went ridiculously nuts um, organically without boosting or promoting and we booked so many more clients purely because people could see what the experience was about they connected with um, you know the emotional touch from the mother of the baby when she was holding it they could see me interacting with my clients and um, it just allowed them to actually be a part of that experience for you know that one minute and um, gosh it you know they just booked. Yeah. It was incredible. I think too, it really as a new a new mother to, you know, maybe not even wanting to take the baby out of the house, the the watching a video of you interacting with another family that's come in for it, I yeah. think that just develops a whole sense of trust. Absolutely. Which a PDF wouldn't do, you know. No. A PDF with a whole wear this, don't do this and that yeah. sort of thing doesn't show you what you actually interacting with the baby yeah. shows the parents. So. And a lot of newborn photographers, when they're first starting out, are like, how do I get the parents to relax and enjoy the session? You know, they feel like they're watching everything I do. Well, this is a great way to, to like Sally said, build that trust and that confidence with them before they even turn up for the studio so they, they know what to expect and they know that it's going to be an incredible experience. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah.
So like I said, that video wasn't created for social media marketing, but you can see the content that's in it, the storytelling, and how emotive it really is. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's the content. Content wins. So it's the strength of the story you're telling is why people share it um, yeah. and people are attracted to it. Um, but with that said, there are some other tips that yeah. we found because social media also changes. Not just social media, people on social media and their behavior on social media changes. I know probably two years ago I would have said a 60 to 90 second video is ideal. But now uh, I'd say more 15 to 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of that's because too, looking at the insights, we've found that um, if people only watch half or less of the video, it's actually not inclined to go into the newsfeed as much. Yeah, right. But if they watch the entire video, Facebook will push that into the newsfeed more. So if you've got a 30 second video and people are only watching 15 seconds, it's probably just going to sort of sit around here. But if you make it a 15 second video and they watch all of it, it's more likely to go into the newsfeed. Yeah, absolutely. So, and that doesn't mean make them all short. Like you don't want to take out content just to make it a short video. Um, but do try to keep it around the 15 to 30 second mark. Um, you'll see greater success that way. I know I'd say 80% of the videos I make for some reason are 23 seconds. <laughs> 23 is my number. They all come out at 23 seconds. But um, that's just, again, we've done a lot of testing. We see a lot of videos come through and that's what we find. But another thing to remember is the first three seconds of your video are imperative. So Absolutely. put your strongest stuff at the beginning. Um, we've also found that movement, a video clip at the start, is more eye-catching than a photo at the start. And also if that first three seconds has some text to pull you in, yeah. sometimes a question, sometimes just something that's actually going to pull them in. But those three seconds is what we call the hook. Um, and that's imperative to making your, your video a success on social media again. Absolutely. Another thing is to make it mobile friendly. Um, so Instagram is actually a better platform for engagement because it's very easy to like. Yeah. Um, it's very easy just to scroll through and like things. Absolutely. Um, so Instagram's great. And Instagram is all mobile. You can't look at, um, I should actually say, I'm speaking like an American now. <laughs> Mo mobile. <laughs> it's all mobile. Um, but it's so true. Like you sit there, if you've got a minute or two, you've got some time, you kind of just, you're scrolling yep. through. It's such a, vi it's so easy. And I think that's what yep. we are today is yep. easy. And another stat too is actually 85% of people on Facebook are watching from their mobile device. Yeah. Um, so to make it mobile friendly often means we do square videos at Animoto. So square takes up 78% more real estate. So if you've got a landscape video, they're kind of like this. Yeah. You either have to turn it or you're watching right. something small. But square, you don't have to turn your phone. Um, it takes up more space. It looks better. Uh, it's actually way more mobile friendly and for Instagram as well. Instagram's mostly square. Um, so it suits Instagram. The other thing is 85% of people are looking at, like you just said, scrolling through in the doctor's surgery or something with no sound on. That's right. So although you can choose great music in Animoto, it's really important to put text in your video. Mm. Text is super important now. Make sure it's big text that people can see on their mobile device. Um, but tell the story with text as well as your photographs. Yeah. Um, so there's sort of some quick tips to sort of think about when you're actually creating your videos just to get to that next level and see if you can make them look. I think too, have a look at what you're seeing in your newsfeed. Absolutely. Um, it can give you some great ideas. Yeah. And you can actually create a mobile looking, a social media looking video um, so that it fits in with a social media platform. Like someone said to me recently, a TV ad doesn't perform well on social media because no. it looks too professional. The quality is like yeah. way up there. It's, it's professional quality doesn't work on social media. So the more social media friendly you can make your videos look, uh, it just fits in with that whole scrolling thing. Absolutely. Mm. And make sure that they're branded because mm -hmm. not, if you don't have your logo, your website on there, people are going to watch it and they're not going to know who created it or where to go. But with that said, don't put your logo at the start no. <laughs> because when that, that hook comes in, the first three seconds, they're gone. if the first thing you see is a logo, it looks like a, yeah. it's just not what I want to watch. Absolutely. So put it at the end. Um, your website too, I think it's important to put the link in the copy. So what you write with your video That's right, yeah. is important as well. So although your logo might be at the end and people may not see it or your website, 
put it in the copy as well so people can click on that yeah. and, and go straight from With there. With what you said about looking at every other video that's in your feed and what you're engaging, um, when I'm scrolling on Facebook, and it's usually first thing in the morning when I wake up, if everyone else is still snoring and the alarm hasn't gone off, I'll jump on Facebook and I'll have a bit of a scroll through. If there's something there that grabs my attention, I've now trained myself to acknowledge that instead of just liking it and scrolling by. Mm -hmm. I've, I've trained myself to go, right, I need to watch this again later. I actually send it to myself in a private message. So I send myself messages and I go back later on and I go, right, there was something in there that grabbed my attention. What was it? And then you start to identify with how these people are advertising and what's working and what's not with you. Mm -hmm. Because like we said at the beginning of this, it's trial and error. You know, you've got to try it. And if it doesn't work the first time, don't give up. Be persistent and have patience. Yeah. There's also a save save video that you yes. can do that similarly <laughs> on Instagram I'm like Kelly you don't have to message yourself you could just save it I like keeping them all <laughs> you just like getting messages I do <laughs> but um Instagram you can actually save don't <laughs> <laughs> Instagram you can save it too and that's something I do when I'm going to make an ad like I save all the favorite ones that I like and if I need some inspiration I go into my save videos and I look at things that have caught my attention and yeah. things and sometimes it's the colors like you know it's a color palette Absolutely. you might like or just the way things again the stories the, the way things transition even what, what was it that caught your eye when you're creating them and, and it's great to get inspired that way yeah it is mm. really inspired yeah how are we gonna wrap it up I don't know <laughs> This was kind of fun. Maybe I should show you a video of how I choose the images and the videos that go into making an Animoto. Yeah. So yeah, it's a great um, great way to, to make it really quick and easy. So yeah. I'm going to show you how I do that. And if you've got that folder of all your favorites, I know you said it before, if it was drag and drop simple, what were your words? If you can just, just drag, drag it and drop, drop it. Like <laughs> in, in the marketing videos in Animoto, it literally is you've got a, a media tray with all of your photos and videos and you drop it in and I can make them in less than five minutes. Yeah, now. you are a whiz though. It's sort of drop I'm a too fuzzy. In. <laughs> I'm, I can be a little fussy. <laughs> well, to, yeah, to me, the hardest part is what words do I put in? Yeah. What is the story I want to tell with that? That's where I get stuck. That's why I love the quotes now. Yeah. Because it's so easy and quote inspirational quotes are everywhere on social media at the mm -hmm. moment. There's that many different Instagram um, pages mm -hmm. that you can follow and purely you know quotes mm -hmm. so it's such a great way to add some text to something that adds that you know that next um, level of emotion mm. I'm finding too there's a lot of the ones I'm saving are the quote ones yeah, yeah. so uh, that's a great way to get noticed more maybe is with one of these quote things especially on Instagram um, you know Instagram's great for that whole uh, that engagement but not transactional so much. So you really, I think it's even yet to be proven that Instagram's a strong advertising channel. Absolutely. <clears throat> but I do think Insta Stories could be the next thing because I think that's really powerful with the swipe up and, yeah. and it's just a powerful way to advertise. But Instagram's good for those inspirational, um, engaging type posts. So I think that's a great platform to try the quotes yeah, absolutely. with too. Yeah. And it's funny because I'm now encouraging a lot of my clients when they come into the studio with the Wi-Fi password and I put my Instagram handle on there so that they can follow me and that way when I'm sharing stuff on there, they're then interacting with what I'm sharing because they're a part of it and they now um, they know now how to find me on Instagram, which is really cool. You're a clever girl. <laughs> All right. right. Thank you. Thank you. I love Sal. She comes to visit me occasionally, but I usually see her in America more often than in Australia. We normally see each other at a trade show, <laughs> not here in your beautiful studio, so it's a treat. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Wine time. Yep. <laughs> So I'm going to take you through a really quick video. I want this video to be about 15 to 30 seconds long. I'm going to use beautiful photographs that I've selected and placed into a folder here on my desktop. What have I got? Six photos selected and they're all about being a mother. So I want this to be very mother orientated and I've even selected a beautiful quote um, which is, to the world you are a mother but to your family, you are the world. So this is going to be very, very sort of subtle. I want it to have beautiful soft music playing in the background. And we're going to use that quote as text over some of these photographs. I've even placed um, a short video clip in there as well that we're gonna start this video off with. So I've got Animoto open here and I'm in my account and I'm just going to simply click the create button. This is gonna give me two options. 
one where I can make more sort of slideshow based videos that are a little bit longer. I tend to use those for more family projects and when I'm creating short videos for work I use the marketing templates. So we'll click on the marketing one and it's going to give you a variety of different templates to choose from. So here we're on the popular ones. Then we, you know, we've got the different categories. What I'm going to do is go to tell your company's story. Um, I've already had a quick look through and it can be very time consuming to go through some of these but they are really fantastic and there's so many different looks for different results. But for the one that I want to create, I'm going to choose this one which is fun social quote. So it gives you, once you click on it, it gives you a little example. So let's just go ahead and click choose storyboard. Now the reason I chose this one is because I love the way that the slides transition from one slide into the next. Okay, so it goes ahead and it loads all of those slides separately here. And you can see over here to the left we've got our tools and then we've got a media section here where we can literally drag and drop our photos and videos. And over here you've got your different slides. So you've got the time that each slide is up on the screen for during the video playing. And this one goes for 16 seconds. So this one's three seconds, two seconds, and you can change how, how long you want um, each slide to transition for. So for example, you just click on that and you literally just increase it or decrease it. So what I went ahead and did before, because we have terrible Wi-Fi here, is I uploaded the files that I want to use um, in my video. From that folder I just drag and drop them into the media column there. So what I want to do is start by placing um, my images exactly where I want them to go. I do want to start with my video so what I'm going to do is actually add a new block and I'm going to choose video and I'm going to drag my video so clicking on it and dragging it down here to the block. So now I can go edit and over here it's going to give me lots of different options as to how I want to actually sort of work with this file. Under scale you can make it sort of zoomed in, zoom out, uh, you can rotate, crop, do all of those things. What I want to do is um, actually trim this video because it is a little bit long and I don't want it to play for eight seconds. I want it to play for roughly about two to three seconds. So if we press play you can see it's just a really short one but I just love her smile and this gentle blink right at the end. So what I'm going to do to trim it is just drag the end in here. I'm going to keep coming. We'll come into about three seconds. And we'll press play. And I reckon we might be able to trim that a little bit more. Press play. Yeah, I think that looks great. So we're going to go ahead and press apply. All right, so we can close that. Actually, with this one, I'm going to go sound off for this video. I'm going to put sound over the whole video, but if there's any background music or sound on this particular video, I can choose to have that switched off so it doesn't interfere with the other, sound, other um, music that I'm going to place. All right, so I want to start with this slide. So I'm going to push it up to the beginning. And then the next image that I want, so we can actually get rid of this one now, and we'll delete that. The next image is, I want to drag this one over and place it just on top of this slide here. So let's go up and press edit. And now what I can do is move the image around to exactly where I want it to be in, um, in the frame. And then with the quote, I can click on this, and I can edit that over here in the text box. I can start now to type what it is that I want it to say. So we might just start to the world and then that way it's not finished sentence and it'll entice people to sort of stay on and um, finish watching the video. Okay, so to move those words, what I want to do is have them placed up here in this top quarter. So it's a little bit of messing around, but in front, in front of the world, um, I'm just going to hit enter so that now it becomes, um, it, it goes in underneath those other words. 
So we'll just drag that up to the top there. And I definitely don't want the text to be hot pink, so I'm going to change that color. And what we might do is go for a, a softer color here. Not white, so it's too, too stark. And we'll just go with white there in the base. And what we can do is also change the size of that text. So I just make it a little bigger there to fill that up. Okay, close that. And what we can do, once we've got all the photos in there, we can come back and change those um, at any point in time. So we can just start placing our photos now. And we'll add a couple of extra blocks. And we'll pop them all in here and then we can have a play with how long they transition for. There we go. Okay, so now to edit this one, I'm going to position that a little further over. Beautiful. And this one. So to scale, I can just enlarge that. I just want to see where it goes to the sides there and then I can drag that down. I might come in a little closer with that one. Just move that over just a touch. Okay, so I want to mix these two here up a little bit, so I'll pop this tick slide in here. And what we might even do is add text down here and remove um, one of these, just to shorten this video up, because now we're at about 22 seconds, which isn't too bad, but we'll see how we go. So here with this one, we want to edit this text. So I'll just highlight all of that. And the next words that we want to come through are you are a mother. Now I want to increase the size of this. And what I'm going to do is change the color to, we might make it this darker color. And then that background color, we can click on that. And what I might do is make that a nice sort of dark gray because these are sort of really dark images. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, that works in quite well. So we'll go to the next one. Click on the text again. And we continue to type, but to your family, you are the world. Now I might have to separate some of this text. And then we delete that. And again, we'll change the colors Go back up here. No, I think that should be okay. Now we want to move this one over here. And I've uploaded my logo. So let's go ahead and edit this one. And we'll just drag the logo into the center there. Perfect. And then when we've got the website, we can add that. can change the color and you can change the size of that as well so we'll just make that a little smaller all right so there's the base of our slideshow and with any slideshow you want to you know be able to edit it and, and change it around so that it flows really well um, 
over here in your tool menu you've got a few different options you've got different design options things like that um, different styles ratios filters um, if you go style you can I'm using the blank slate which has nothing if you click on the change button um, there's a few they add sort of different effects to the images but we don't want to do that I want to keep mine really nice and simple go to ratio you can change it from landscape to square I'm happy with square because as we've already mentioned it fills the screen and it's more user friendly and then you can add filters if you want but we don't do that with um, photos that we've already edited and then down the bottom we can change the music so we'll start back at the top because what I want to do is change the font um, and just sort of have a look at some different options there I think I like that one and then now if we because we don't want to use the others we'll change the song and I've already got something in mind so when you click change it'll open up a heap of songs you can browse the full library you can even upload a song if you've got a license for it um, you can choose popular for photography and you can create your own favorites which means if you go through and like a song you can add a little love heart to it and add it to your favorites this song here I tend to go with more sort of um, very simple classical instrumental music so I'm gonna just go with a mother's love which is so appropriately named so let's go ahead and select that and it's loading all right so once that's kind of up what I like to do next is actually do a little bit of a run through a preview just to see how it flows in and and see where I need to make any changes so it's going to generate a preview for me it's going to run for 23 seconds so if we're going to aim for that sort of 15 to 30 seconds this is, is not a bad time frame but this is where you get to see if you need one image to stay up a little bit longer or or not so long It's not too bad. <laughs> um, I'm going to play it one more time because what I'm looking at is just how quickly it transitions um, up here for those first two slides. I really love the way that uh, that first little bit of video grabs your attention. Okay, so I want to continue editing. I really think that I need these two photographs here just to stay up a little bit longer. This one currently is one second, this one is two seconds, and we've got three seconds, three seconds, three seconds. So if we make them all three seconds, it only increases our video to, oh, and then we've got this one here it only increases our video to 28 seconds. Um, what we can do is reduce this to two seconds and this to two as well. And let's now have another look at that preview. Yeah, so those two changes that I made are much, much better. Um, I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. Such a great little um, social media video to put out there. And they're so quick and easy to do that you can do one of these a week just to pop up onto you know, your Instagram, Instagram platform, your Facebook page, and really grab the attention of your audience. So if we were going to finish this, um, this video up, then we want to make sure that it's obviously saved. We'll go into here and then we're going to go produce. So we're going to name this one and we'll call it the same as the song. Mother's Love. 
and we can put the date on there if we wish to. Producer's name, Kelly Brown, and description. Uh, we'll just call this um, Mother's Love um, Instagram video. Finish. Okay, so this is where it does all of its saving and it's going to save it in different formats there. What I love also about Animoto is that it allows you to, to download it um, or export it directly to different social media platforms. If you've got Vimeo hooked up, you can export it directly to Vimeo. Um, many, many different um, things that you can do there. And then you can also link directly to um, different platforms as well. So as that's just continuing to save there and render, Okay, so it's now been saved and is available to watch in different resolutions. All right, what I'm going to do, because I have Vimeo connected, I'm going to share that to Vimeo. And it says here that it takes about 15 to 20 minutes and you can begin your export there. So cross, cross that out because you don't want to sit here for 15 to 20 minutes. If you want to download this video directly, you can choose which resolution you want to download that in. So usually for social media, I go around the 720, um, which is nice and quick to download. Most people are, you know, viewing things on their iPhones. So if I was concerned about the resolution, then I would go with the larger file. But if we're going to export that at 720, it's going to open it. It's going to download that directly for me. And then I can upload that directly to um, Facebook I can then there it is right there how quick's that so I can now let's watch it a little bigger press play Perfect. So that's exactly what I wanted to achieve. Now I can go directly onto, like I said, Facebook, upload that, and then I can share that, um, you know, over to Instagram or vice versa. That is how quick and easy it, it truly is to do. And if I'm doing that once a week and sharing that to social media, then I'm going to have a much better chance of engaging my audience and being seen, which is going to be uh, fantastic. So have fun. I can't wait to see what you create. Thanks for watching.